There are two things that I've learned so far being a GP nurse. Number one is you really have to be an FBI agent to find out what the patient's here for sometimes. And the second thing is that you should never think, let me just see this extra patient because it's only going to take a minute because it never takes a minute and the patient is never there for what they say they are there for. and welcome back to another vlog. My name is Claire Carmichael. I'm a newly qualified nurse working as a GP nurse. I know you absolutely can work as a GP nurse if you're newly qualified. Despelling that myth straight away in this vlog, right off. So this is my second week as a GP nurse. Today is Tuesday. I my shifts are half eight to half six, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday, Thursdays, I'm in at one to half six, which is when I'll be doing my vlogs in the mornings, get it done in the morning. Just to update you what I'm doing, where I'm at and how my week's going. So Monday, Monday started off amazing. I had, so I do at the minute, just the blood testing and the wounds because that's pretty much what I can do in GP right now. Once I get trained how to do the ECG machines, I can set those up and do those on patients. And then as I progress and do more training, I'll be able to do more like smear testing, travel vaccines, baby vaccines, all those sort of things. So yeah, I'm just doing what I can as I can, if that makes sense. So yesterday I had all blood tests and um, wound management. However, one of the wounds was my traumatic wound from last week. I can't remember if I put this in the vlog. I can't remember. I'm so sorry, guys, if, you hear, if you've heard this story last week in a vlog, let me know because <laughs> I haven't got a clue. But last week I had this patient come in. I was on my own, doing my own patients, doing my own clinic. And the reception come in and said, there's this patient at the desk. He's got this traumatic finger wound. And I was like, oh, OK, let me just have a look at it, because if it's just a, a simple cut or something, I can do that. That's quite simple. But if he needs to go to A&E or something, then I could send him there. So I thought, let me just look at it, because without looking at it, I'm not going to know what to do with him. So um, the reception booked him in for me. I sat down, looked at it and it was actually quite simple. It, the person had just sliced the tip of their finger. So there was like a flappy skin bit hanging off. It wasn't very deep. It was quite superficial. I felt happy to do that. So I did that and I managed that wound. I used all of my knowledge from university, from district nursing placements and I used that knowledge to sort of put in that situation at that time and luckily it worked. So what I did, I just literally put a steri strip over it to keep the flap down and secure and in place so it didn't fall off. Um, and then I just put like a little soft paw dressing on top because it's just a superficial wound. It wasn't really oozing. It wasn't exudating, nothing like that. There was nothing that told me that it needed um, a more complex wound dressing if that makes sense so put a bit of soft pour on it put a bit of tape round to keep it in place just in case it fell off and i said just leave it however in a few days you can take it off and check it if you want to if you don't feel comfortable doing that just come back into clinic however i want you to come in monday to see me i want to review it again make sure what i've done is the right decision and just make sure you're okay that's all right so this patient booked in with me yesterday took off the wound it healed so I was there like, this is amazing. My judgment was right. Thank you. So yes, I looked at it. I was like, this is amazing. But just because it was a bit sensitive still, I thought just put a little soft pour just over the top just to keep it um, protected, just in case it's still healing a little bit. And I said to him, you can probably take that off in a couple of days and that'll be just fine. However, if you have any problems, signs of infections, you always have to advise patients what to look for. Come back if you've got any problems, but I don't think I need to see you again because this is healed. I'm just literally putting this on for a little bit of extra protection for the next couple of days. So yes, I am chuffed. So that was my day yesterday. That was the, one of the highlights of the day yesterday. Now, as I said at the start of the vlog, you have to be an FBI agent sometimes with patients, especially more so around blood testing I've found in GP because they'll be booked in for a blood test, but you really have to dig through the notes to see what the blood test's for because sometimes it's not on the notes. There'll also be blood tests that I've never heard of. I haven't heard of some of the blood tests, things like fertility check blood tests. I've never done anything like that before. So just little things like that I had to double check with the doctors with and make sure I was doing the right blood test for the patient because the last thing I want is to do the wrong thing and the patient has to come back and go through all of that again. So it's always better, guys, if you don't know, say something and check. However, being an FBI agent, 
is yeah I love it I, I, I don't tell anybody this but I do love it I love like looking through the notes and trying to work out what the patient is there for and then when you get it right it's like yes I got that right it makes you feel good because you've, you've done your work you've you've done that independently and you've got it right so it's a really nice feeling and yeah I kind of like it but it can be frustrating when you can't literally cannot find what this person's here for and that's when you need to find out who saw them last and um what they're here for basically but yeah but i love it this isn't a moan this is i love it and just leading on from that so i've in my um gp placement my mentor was incredible she was so knowledgeable she was fantastic and i remember her saying to me sometimes you know it's about winging it and at the time, and actually a few nurses have said this, a lot of my mentors have said, most days it is about winging it. And I always thought that's a really strange thing to say because surely we should be going on research and evidence-based practice and things like that. And at the time I didn't really think anything of it, but now I'm there, I'm working in GP, I can absolutely see what they mean they don't mean winging it like just guess and no the 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 way that i interpret that now is sometimes you don't know what the patient's there for and you're literally winging it because you're becoming that fbi agent you're digging and delving into what this patient's here for but you're also using your common sense and your knowledge on top of that so the whole three are working together to provide the best care for that patient and then obviously if you need the evidence-based practice the research you go and look for that as well obviously always go by that but i can absolutely see now what they meant by that they don't mean oh let's just wing it and hope it's okay it is all about putting all these different things together and little pieces to complete your sort of jigsaw for the patient if that makes sense really hard to explain but i understand it now so yeah so that was really interesting my next event of the day was, there was, I can't go too much into detail about this because of confidentiality, but there was a patient at the desk wanted to be seen for something. And the reception come and asked and wondered if we could do the thing that he was here for or if he needed to be sent to A&E or minor injuries. And I thought, well, this seems quite simple. What is he there for? Because I didn't see the patient. I was just taking what the receptionist was saying. So I was like, that sounds quite simple. I'm free for like the next half an hour. I may as well just maybe like assess it before booking him in or anything just have a look and see what it is because if I can do it then that'd save him a four hour wait at A&E and in my head I was thinking this is a really good thing I brought the patient in no it wasn't a simple thing <laughs> I looked and I was like oh I said I'm really really sorry to the patient I said I'm really not happy and I'm not comfortable doing this it's really out of my expertise and I do think you need to go to A&E with this because if I did what you're asking of me and you keeled over and died or something as a result that that's on me and I'm really not comfortable with that and they're like oh it's easy you just do this you do this it's simple I could do it myself and the patient had that sort of mentality and I said but actually it's a little bit more serious than you're saying and that you think it is so I, I really think you either I'll give you two choice two choices you can go to A&E and there might be a bit more of a wait time, I don't know. Or you can go to the minor injuries unit. And a lot of patients have said that the minor injuries, you do get seen a little bit faster and they can do that sort of thing there where I was sending him for. So yeah, he was okay with it in the, in the end, the way I explained it and stuff, he was okay. And he left the building. So yeah, so if patients are here for, oh, just a quick minute. No, no. Just be careful is what I'm saying. Be careful what you're doing and what you're saying. I learned a lot from that mistake. I probably won't make that mistake again. So that was my day, guys. At the end of the day, I think it was about 4.40 or something like that. I was blocked out to half six to do some e-learning. So I sat and I did my safeguarding, manual handling, infection control, all of that sort of thing on the e-learning. I've got a load more to do. I didn't have time to do everything. So I'm going to do that bit by bit this week as I go. I think they've blocked out some spaces for me to do my e-learning, which is really, really good. And yeah, that's it. So today I'm in one to half six. Oh, I booked my uniform. Sorry extra thing i've finally tracked down the lady to do my uniforms i shall have my uniforms hopefully by the end of the week maybe next week but it's, it's obviously you know obligatory obligatory is that right anyway uniform selfie is coming <laughs> i can't wait morning everyone so it is thursday morning now in my last video i think i said <laughs> i need to go back and watch it but i think i said something like i love being an fbi agent absolutely regret every decision i made that morning <laughs> 
oh, I so jinxed my day. So I went into work on Tuesday and literally every single patient that come in bar one, maybe two, I had no clue what they were there for. They had the wrong forms with them. <laughs> there was nothing on the computer systems. And I sat there, I was like, so every patient, so all my patients are booked in 10 minute slots for their bloods. And so it, it's taken me longer than 10 minutes to try and work out what every single person was here for. <laughs> And it just put me really behind and I had to apologise to every patient. I mean, I wasn't too far behind. They're only waiting like an extra 10 minutes, but still 10 minutes, even one minute when a patient is one minute too long waiting in that waiting room. I'm so apologetic because I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry for your wait. But calm. It was okay. <laughs> the shift went all right. Nobody died. Everyone was safe. And I think everybody got the right thing in the end. We'll find out next week, probably, if anything was the wrong thing. But um, what can I do? You can only do the best you can in that situation. And it wasn't just me either. I had to go and ask for advice and help from other people, including the lab. So I was on the phone to the lab, pathology, the other nurses, sometimes the doctor. I even asked the pharmacist at one point because I was just like, oh my God. But no, it wasn't just me. Nobody had a clue either. So thankfully it wasn't just me. And it, this is when, I think the problem comes when patients come into GP referred to someone else. I think that's where the problem lied that day because they were coming in wanting these bloods for the hospital or for ongoing queries and things like that and we had nothing on our system to say this and that's where the problem lies i don't know what the answer is to this but there needs to be better communication somewhere along the line oh god but anyway i think everyone's got the right things i'm hoping that it went okay i spoke to a nurse yesterday because um i was panicking about it i was like oh it was manic yesterday i didn't know what people were coming in for and she was like don't worry about it honestly this happens to everybody it's not you it's just the system and you have to be an fbi agent sometimes so yeah it's not just me thank you so i had a manic day however yesterday wednesday was amazing so i was in my usual half eight to half six yesterday i had an amazing day all my patients were seen on time bar maybe one or two which i was like one or two minutes late for picking them up from the waiting room and that's purely because I was looking into what forms they needed like the day before but apart from that everybody knew what they were there for what they were expecting I knew exactly what tests to do it was amazing it was perfect absolutely fantastic and then in the evening from four o'clock half four sorry from half four I was blocked out to do my e-learning so I did my pgds which took oh my god Ever. the e-learning I sat there and because they provide links and stuff to look at as well it's not just an e-learning package you have to go and look at the competencies framework you have to look at the nice guidelines on pgds I advise you to go and look at those if you're interested so I was there for hours like from four o'clock till six o'clock four five six two hours and I'd already started this last week so I'd already been through the first couple of pages oh <sighs> But yeah, it took me a long time. However, I am more aware now about PGDs. If you don't know what they are, please go and Google PGDs, nice guidelines, and just have a look. This vlog is going to be too long if I start explaining what PGDs are. But maybe I'll do a separate vlog at some point on that. And now I've done my e-learning, I can have a look at the PGDs. I can look at the competence framework and I can get my PGDs signed off so I can start giving these to patients. Once I've signed off the PGDs and I've been signed off the competencies, then I can give the flu vaccines, I can give the shingles vaccines, I can give, I can't remember what else I need, but yes, I can give things like that basically. So I'll be able to see a little bit more patients than bloods, wounds, and now I can do ECGs. Oh my God, that's the other thing. So I was with the other nurse yesterday in the afternoon as well, it was my e-learning. And just before I started my e-learning, we had a couple of ECGs to do and I'm okay setting ECGs up. I know where to be, where to place them all. The 12 is 12 lead ECG. So I know where to place them all. It was just getting my head around the computer system and how to access the bits that I needed and how to record the ECG and how to print the ECG for the patient and then what to do next if there's a problem. That's what I didn't know. So I set up the patient, did all that. And then the other nurse showed me how to do all of that. And now I can do them. Yay! So I can do ECGs now. So now I can see bloods wounds and ECGs so far. <laughs> Yay. So yeah. So yesterday was an amazing day. All in all, a winning day. Absolutely loved it. 
I am exhausted. If you can't tell by these bags under my eyes that sheer exhaustion on my face, I'm so tired. It is so busy. Those people that say it's somewhere to retire to, no, it's busy guys. It is so busy. I was non-stop, patient after patient after patient. And it's not just physically draining, it is mentally exhausting because you're trying to work out all of these different things. It's just, it's amazing. Um, this isn't a moan. Like, I absolutely love in life. I love my job. This is the best career I've ever been in. It's fantastic. But just word of advice, it is busy and you will be exhausted at the end of the day. You will get sort of really tired. You will sleep very, very well. I sleep really, really well at night now. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm talking too much. I'm wrapping on. The video's now seven minutes long, so I'm going to stop it here. So, hi everyone. Sorry, I'm just going to add here about my uniform. So this is a temporary uniform that I've been given. It's a tunic, but it doesn't have the um, buttons. I always think of these like dentists or beauty therapists kind of uniforms. I don't know why, but it looks very, very smart and I'm happy with it. That's the main thing. But this is my temporary uniform. Someone has loaned me their uniform so I can feel part of the team, which is amazing. So a massive, massive thank you to that nurse. She's fantastic. So yeah, this is my uniform until my official uniform comes. When my official uniform comes, I'm going to be blogging all about it. So watch this space. And I hope you all have an amazing week. Watch out because I'm going to do the Q&A answers that I put on my Instagram. So I'm going to do a Q&A vlog. If you've got any um, questions that you want me to add in there, put them below and I will try and answer them. I'm going to put the cut off for this video as Tuesday, first thing Tuesday morning, because I want to record the Q&A on Tuesday and then get it posted ideally by Wednesday or Thursday. But if not, it might be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But anyway, next week will be the Q&A vlog either way. So yeah, have an amazing week guys and I shall see you next time. Guys, hold the front door. Guess what's just come? Excuse, this vlog is not ending here. I'm going to get changed and show you. Oh my God, as you can see, I'm ecstatic. Here we go. <sighs> Nurse Carmichael is officially here. It needs a bit of ironing. But I don't care. I'm seeing patients in this for the rest of the day. Oh my God. <laughs> so as a GP nurse, some of you will wear navy blue. That's me. Oh, I'm here. I've arrived. Excuse the hair. I know. I got ready so quick that, yeah. Oh, I'm so happy, guys. Have a great week.